Hello everybody, welcome to my RC Plane channel. I'm James and I'm excited because I'm starting a new kit build series. I'm going to be building this Balsa USA Stingray 120, which I have right here in this box. I haven't opened it up yet, I just got this a few days ago. So in this video, I want to open up the box, I want to check out the manual, I want to look at the plans, and I want to look at the parts. Alright, so the reason I got this particular kit is because I was looking for something to pair up with this DLE 20. This is a DLE 20cc gas powered RC plane engine and the specs on this are 15 to 30cc so I figured this will kind of match really well. It goes right in between those the, the, the upper and the lower end of the specs for this for this kit and when I was doing sort of like my research looking for planes that I thought it would be a good match for this I noted that a lot of people were putting the 20 this DLE 20 on this particular kit. But I also looked at a few other kind of options. Um, one of them was an ARF. Now I, I do have a few ARFs. I like ARFs, but I also like to build. And my channel is more about building. But I did come across a uh, Hangar 9 10cc Ultra Stick. They make a 10cc and a 30cc. And that's really cool looking planes. And a lot of people are putting the 20 on the 10cc. And you can check it out. And so the 10cc, obviously this is bigger than a 10cc. And, but people were putting um, this one on that particular plane and it flew great and looked like it was really fun. But I, you know, again, I just kind of decided I didn't want to do that. I want to build something. The other thing I was thinking about doing, and I have been thinking about doing this for a while now, is to build, I, I haven't done it, I want to build off a set of plans. I want to get an old vintage um, plan set and cut the parts myself. And I thought, well, maybe this is a good opportunity to do that. So I was looking around on a few websites. And my favorite website for old plans, because they're free, um, is the uh, UK. It's called the Outer Zone, and it's out of the UK. And they have all kinds of free plans you can, you can download. And I came across an uh, old plan set for, it was a Great Plains Big Stick 60, so a 60-class airplane. I think it had like a, I uh, forget size of the wingspan it had on I think it was a 67-inch wingspan. But it was for a two-stroke 60 powered engine and people again people were putting um, this a, a DLE or 20 cc gas on it and it looked like it was a pretty good match also but you know I started thinking more about that as if I, I could do that but then I'd have to cut all the parts and I wanted to do that like I said I want to do that in the future but I thought you know this for this build I want to get something that's a little bit more accessible so when I came across this one the the, the Stingray 120 I grabbed it because you know it's readily available um, Balsa USA is still producing kits. They make good kits and um, it's out there and it's kind of relatively easy to get, get your hands on one. So that's kind of why I went with this. All right, so let me go ahead and move some things around and we'll um, take a look and see what's inside the box. All right, so here's our box. So this is how it came in the mail from Balsa USA. It wasn't wrapped in anything else. So the box is actually a pretty sturdy cardboard box. It got some pretty good beefy staples over here and it's sealed with some of this tape but there's nothing really on the box besides the front label actually it does have a label on the side which is like right right there but here's the front of the box so yeah this out came and it arrived in good shape so i'm happy to see that so let's go ahead and open this thing up actually what i'll do is i'm going to look at the the label here real quick and look at some of the details here so here's the label and I do want to look at the spec. So according to the box here, it has a wingspan of 83 inches, a wing area of 1,276 square inches, a weight of 8.5 to 9 pounds, a length of 60 inches. And here it has the power of a 0.80 to 0.90 two-stroke, and then a 0.9 to a um, 1.2 four-stroke. And the 1.2 is why we have the name 120 right here. Now, the thing is, when you go to the website and you look at the specs on the website, they have slightly different um, numbers there. Let me see what I have here. So on the, um, let's see, for the weight on the website, the weight comes in, they say, 8.5 to 10.5 pounds. Oops, you write 10.5 on here. Okay. And then they also have, let's see, what else do they have? That's the only discrepancy that I can that I think is on between the two sources. Okay, so what I did is I did a quick wing loading calculation. So basically what I'm going to do is I take the, the square inches and I convert that to square feet. And I got 8.86 square feet. 
eight six feet squared and then like I said they had um, eight and a half to ten and a half pounds on the website and you convert that to ounces and let's see what I got here I got 136 I'll just put that down here oops my pen is kind of no good 136 to 168 ounces and then when I do the wing loading calc it comes in at let's see 15 point three two I did this off camera obviously 18.96 whatever and that's going to be ounces per foot square so that's the wing loading based on the specs and I'm going to use the ones that come off the website right now because they, they give the higher they give the higher weight and then of course also on the website it says it's a 10 I'm sorry 15 to 30 cc engine okay all right so there it is so the wing loading actually looks pretty good that's actually a relatively low I don't want to say low wing loading but it's a lot less than sort of like a warbird or really a sport you know kind of a higher kind of performance sport plane this is a really sort of a good wing loading of 15 to 18 ounces per foot square so that's going to be that basically is going to be a nice nice flying plane like that so one thing I did see here is that there's a picture that looks like this must be a two stroke that's probably a 1.2 cubic inch two stroke I mean I'm sorry four stroke and with the gas engine it's going to be mounted just basically inverted so the engine is going to be sticking out the bottom not the top when I do my build but yeah that's the that's basically the way what the specs are saying and then nothing anything else to show you here um, ultra fast building well, we'll see about that step-by-step -step photo illustrated instructions rugged preprint landing gear wire landing gear now I did know that when I saw that the wire landing gear is just basically a simple wire construction I'll probably replace that with like a solid landing gear assembly um, top grade balsa and plywood complete hardware package and then um, rolled plans so yeah that's pretty much all you get on the on the front label here all right so anyhow let's go ahead and open this thing up and take a look inside get out my Swiss Army knife Okay, so it looks like it was packed pretty pretty nicely for the journey. And let's go ahead and see what's in here. Oh, there's my there's my invoice or my receipt. Here is the assembly manual. And boy, it seems kind of on the thin side. Let me see how many pages it has in it. I don't know how many pages it has. All right, well, we'll go over this in just a minute. But there's just a, basically, it looks like it's just a photocopied um, instruction manual. All right. And then we'll pull out this piece of cardboard. Okay, and there's our pieces in here. Um, what I'm going to do is, I'm like I said, I'm going to go ahead and pull out, look at one thing at a time. So here's the rolled plans. We'll open these up in just a few minutes. And then here are all the parts. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to look at the manual first. And then I'll, then I'll look at the plans and then we'll go over the parts because it'll make a little bit more sense when I pull the parts out to kind of know which what is what. And yeah, just real quickly here, but yeah, there's a hardware package, a lot of hardware in here. And here's the landing gear that they mentioned. And yeah, it's laser cut. So one thing I noted is, first of all, is Balsa USA has been around for decades. I don't know how old the company is, but I know it goes back pretty dang far. And a lot of these kits have been around for a long time. And some of them, like the smoothie I built recently, I think went back, I think I forget how far that went back, but um, originally it was probably a die cut kit. And then they go to a laser cut kit. This is a laser cut kit. And I think over the years, there's slight modifications to some of these kits that they have. 
So you do find, at least my experience, this is my third Balsa USA kit. And from my experience, I do find little discrepancies between kind of the details you see on the website, the details on the plans, and the details in the instructions. So there's, there's slight variations here and there. None of it's a big deal and you know it doesn't cause any problems but it's something to keep in mind if you get one of these kits you make you may find that to be true also so anyhow no big deal all right so let me go ahead and let's go ahead and look at the manual and we'll come back and we'll look at the plans and then the parts okay so here's the manual and this is just an eight and a half by eleven bunch of sheets that they stapled here in the middle kind of a photocopy looks like it's pretty decent pretty decent quality though and let me see here so here the the copyright is 2021 so that's nice it's relatively recent and I know that basically I, I did, I watched their, also USA had a, has a couple playlists for some builds that they're doing or that, they're, that they've done. And I was watching the one for the Newport 17 um, kit that they had. And they did mention that over the years they do check the plans, they do check the instructions. If they come across a little discrepancy or something, they do to kind of make edits to them over the years. So yeah, 2021, that's relatively recent, so that's nice. And let's go ahead and open it up and take a look. So there it is, of course, it's the Stingray. And we'll see, I don't know if it actually comes with decals. We'll find out, probably not. But let's go ahead and open it up here. Got some int introductory type of stuff here. Talks about probably kind of reading the instructions, gives you some information on sort of the approach. Talk about the AMA and probably why you should join. I agree with that. If you haven't checked into the AMA, you should look into that. Uh, let's see here, so here's some information about some adhesives. So they have their brand of adhesives and I'll probably just be using Starbond for my for my CAs but let's go to kind of page here here's some abbreviations some more information about the different types of uh, adhesives they talk about a gel CA and there's other CA information here here's a nice little conversion for metric to to standard um, let's see what else here some information here on tools and some hints laminating parts etc that's nice to kind of go through I'm gonna go over this entire manual even though I've built kits in the past and I've built a lot of them, I am no expert. And I always, I always read from the beginning to the end of the manual a couple times before I start. And I always look at every time I'm going to do a new step, I read it several times over to make sure I don't miss anything. And I still, I still miss, miss things. So any case, so yeah, so just more information basically on, on building tips, which is really nice. Soldering. That's a good one. Uh, see so here talks about some engines here, choosing a proper engine and talks about gasoline engines. That's nice. Glow fuel engines. And I think they all, I don't know if they have an electric option for this, but I'm sure people have done it. Some information about your radio, and of course balancing the model, which is really, really important. And then here's looks like this is the key to the parts. I don't think these are to, to scale. No, they're not to scale. So these are just basically the key to the parts so you know what's what. That's nice to have. All right, and it just starts out with the wing construction right here. And yeah, really nice. The, the pictures are really nice. I noted that in the, um, like, again, you know, when I built the, the smoothie, the pictures were kind of old and they were sometimes hard to see what was going on in the picture, but these look pretty, pretty sharp, pretty nicely detailed pictures. There's the wing construction. More on the wing. Lots of deep, boy, I, I made sort of a remark about how thin this thing looked, but basically when you open it up, boy, it's packed full of instructions. Lots of lots of detail, lots of instructions. Of course, a, 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 a pilot, maybe, maybe not. I don't know if I'll do that. Let's see what else. Again, more of the wing construction. I believe it's, yeah, it's just going to be one solid wing. Now it's an 80-inch wingspan. It's a pretty, pretty big wingspan. And it'll be fun kind of fitting that in the car. But yeah, it'll be one solid wing and then it moves on to the tail section here as you can see here and it's an open kind of frame tail section it's not solid pieces and then we move on to the fuselage which are solid pieces very good some doublers going in here here's the formers or the bulkheads very good very nice looking manual and it looks pretty straightforward kind of just basic nice I don't want to say simple build but definitely not you know something like a scale plane or something Here's some information on the in the fuselage here's one thing here that I'm gonna kind of check into is if you look at the it's probably hard to tell in the picture but yeah so the turtle deck 
on the fuselage there. I don't know if you can make it up. It's rounded, and but the front of the airplane is squared off. And I'm not sure I'm kind of fond of that, the way that looks. If you can hear it is here, this block going in, you kind of see how it's square, and then it gets rounded in the back. Here, here it is, here's the turtle deck right here. You can see how it's rounded, and then the front end is square. I may change that, I may kind of make this rounded somehow to kind of get it to match more of the shape from the nose all the way back. We'll see how it goes. And then here's some of the information on the tail wheel, looks like tail wheel assembly. Very good. And again, here's the landing gear. So I'm, like I said, I'm probably gonna use like a solid landing gear, like a, um, I'll probably go purchase one for this size airplane. I think just, for me, it's just personal preference. I just think it looks better. Um, there's the tail, tail wheel bracket going on there. Then here's some more information here on saws. I got one of those saws. Those are really nice, those little razor saws. Balance your model again, it's very, very important. Here are the throws, okay. Okay, here's some pictures. Yeah, here's, you can kind of see like this picture here, kind of what I'm talking about. It's kind of rounded, kind of see that it's rounded, then it goes to square. I don't know, it just doesn't look right to me. I may, I may change that up. And I know some people put, um, they actually put a canopy, like see, notice this one doesn't have a canopy. Um, this guy has a pilot in this one. But yeah, I've noticed people do put canopies on them. So I'll see how it goes and see how what it looks like. But yeah, it does look a little bit odd to me to have kind of like this kind of open kind of canopy looking kind of thing. They could have just made it go all the way across. I don't know. Anyhow, it's just personal preference. But yeah, some nice pictures of the plane. And that's about it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and we'll set this aside for now. And I'm going to go open up and take a look at the plans. So here are the plans and it's a rolled set. And I think there's two, I think there's two plans in here or two sheets, I should say. And it looks like it's a pretty decent size set of plans. So I'm gonna measure this. I think it's, these are 36 inches. Yeah, so they're 36 inches wide. And then we'll see how long they are. Let's go ahead and open them up here and roll them out. I had to move my table back a little bit because these are pretty big plans for my work area. I won't be building them on this table. This is just my a little table I set up so I can show the plans. Let's head and roll these out now. Hopefully I can get the entire set on the camera here. Let me get some weights. Put one right here. So there's two sheets, like I said. Back there. Okay, at least keep going, looks like, off the camera. So let me put some weights on this side, then I can kind of drag the plans over and look at this other side. Looks like I got it all on camera, so that's good. All right, so it's obviously this is the fuselage side, and then the wing is going to be underneath that. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the fuselage. And boy, I see yeah, it's a nice big plane here. Um, obviously, here's looking down on top. Here's the side view. Here's the wing profile of the wing, the airfoil. And back here, of course, is this, the tail section with the fin and the rudder. Again, the fin is this open kind of structure. Same thing with the stabilizer. Then the elevator and the rudder look like they're solid pieces of, of balsa. And then these different formers. These F, looks like these F, uh, well, probably F4 through F9 or at least F6 through F9 support the turtle deck area. Now the profile, you can't tell, but the profile um, just looks like it's a nice, kind of the lines kind of go nicely toward the back from the nose to the turtle deck. But again, on top, which you can see, we may not be able to make out, but this is that wood block that they put in here. So there'd be a wood block up here and then sort of like this kind of um, open kind of canopy area. And that's all squared off and then it goes then it's rounded when it gets to the turtle deck area and again like i said a personal preference i may try to figure out a way to sort of round that off um, here's a profile right here obviously through through the front of the fuselage looking at the sort of squared off portion up there so yeah so it's square squared off squared off and then it goes round so i'd like to kind of check on see if i can kind of maybe change that a little bit so down here is the Landing gear, like I mentioned, which is the, the wire landing gear. Here's the nose of the plane with the fuel tank. 
And of course the engine's gonna be right up here in the engine compartment. Here's the firewall. Servos are gonna be going right here in the center. Um, looks like the wing mount is going to be with a bolt and some balsa, I mean, I'm sorry, um, dowels. And then the sides of the plane and the bottom of the plane, I believe, are all just solid sheets of balsa until you get to this turtle deck area where they actually use these stringers and you kind of make a, a frame for it. But yeah, pretty cool. Oh, here's a little windscreen they're showing right here, a little windscreen um, cut out if you wanted to do that, optional. And like I said, I may I may leave it open. I may I may actually get a canopy. I've seen people put a canopy on this, so we'll I'll look into that later. Okay, so there's our tail section, and again, you kind of build the frame for the fin, and the frame for the stabilizer. Here's the elevator here, side view, and here is it's like, a, it's like they're just using a a tail skid. That's interesting with no wheel. Hmm. I will definitely put a wheel on this. And probably have it hooked into the rudder. And I think the can think the plans, the instructions actually show a, a tail wheel. So we'll check into that. That's kind of interesting. And then there's a oh, there's a little dorsal fin kind of optional thing. I'll, I'll probably put in it, that in because that looks kind of nice how it transitions from the how it will transition from the fin to the turtle deck. And of course here are the formers again. Okay, nice nice kind of beefy construction. Um, all balsa wood like I mentioned. So yeah, really cool. Let's go ahead and I'll I will take this sheet off and we will look at the look at the wing. Okay, so there's the wing plan. It looks like it's about the same length. And interesting, looks like you're gonna build both uh, the left and the right wing panels on the plans. And probably because I just don't have the space. I'm going to have to divide these plans up a little bit. I'll probably end up cutting, well I know I'll end up cutting down the center here and probably cut away from this side over here because I need to get the stabilizer also on, on the workbench. So yeah, so I'll probably cut this into a couple pieces. It's always good to make a copy of your plans um, uh, just so that you have an extra set just in case. So I'll go get a copy made of these so that I, if I screw up or I cut them wrong or something I can always have a backup. But yeah, so here's the wing panels, and then it has um, sort of ailerons are going to be mounted in the wing. That's good. And then there's the leading edge with some sheeting. Here's all of the ribs. And what is this right here? Oh, those are just, these are just little, these guys are just showing you some kind of shims that you're going to use during the construction. And then the tail, the tail trailing edge is going to have some more sheeting. And it looks like there is a, is there a, sh is there a block in the middle? Um, yeah, there is a small, okay, if you can kind of make it out right here, there is a small little, uh, looks like a little piece of wood that's sandwiched between the sheeting, which is right right back in here. You can kind of see that. And then, of course, the wing is going to be mounted on with the dowels at the front end, and then by with bolts at the trailing edge. And then they get kind of sandwiched together. There's going to be, I guess, these plywood dihedral braces, as you can see here and some more doublers and yeah so pretty pretty basic kind of um, common construction methods of course up here on the top um, you can kind of see the aileron with the hinging um, going in up there so let me go ahead and I'll drag this plan over and we'll take a look at the details on this side okay so here are the um, here's the here's the again it's the um, airfoil showing the main ribs or the main rib section and then of course here's the aileron with the control horn and then it has these wingtip end plates and it's like they're sandwiched right here which with two pieces one eighth sheet it says for a quarter inch total wing plate uh, wingtip end plate and what else do we can i see here oh, okay so here's the center section showing the sandwiching sort of the, the plywood dihedral braces in here of course here's the dowel and then the trailing edge with the with the filler blocks one thing i notice also here is is there's not much for the hinge to grab onto. And this was the same issue that was with the Balsa USA smoothie. There was just an open kind of hollow area in the, in the trailing edge. And I filled that in with a block of wood and I've seen other people do that too. So I'll probably cut some pieces of wood and I'll do something like what's shown here. I'll do that, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll put um, so just some blocks of wood where the hinges are gonna be so that I have something for the hinge to kind of grab into. I don't like just kind of putting it through this little thin kind of uh, joint right there. 
And then down here, it looks like there's some information on the, what is this? There's the, oh, this is going to, oh, this is showing you sort of how it's going to attach to the, to the fuselage, I think, right in here. Um, what else? Yeah, this is, this is a section looking at the, at the wing from edge on. And then here is the stabilizer with the elevator. And it looks like it's just made out of some pretty beefy balsa pieces. Really nice. I like that. I like kind of doing construction like this. I like cutting the pieces and fitting them in there. I always enjoy doing that. And of course, here's the elevator. So yeah, it looks like it's a really, really nice, nice plans. And I'm not sure if they have the date on them or not. Let's see. I'm just curious if they've made any. I mean, these, these, this is a hand drafted plan. You can tell it's a hand drafted plan. So it's been around for quite some time. Um, yeah, this is just sheet. This is just sheet two. And let's look at the first sheet again real quick. I want to look at the title or the title block on it. Kind of see what that says. Yep, there it is. So the Sting, Balsa USA Stingray 120, 1276. So yeah, it's all the same information. And I don't see a date on here, but yeah, definitely these are older plans. Okay, so those are the plans. That's a little review of the plan set. And boy, looking, looking forward to this. It's a nice big plane and it's gonna be fun to build. All right, so the next step is let's go ahead and take a look at the parts inside the box. Okay, well, as I mentioned, they do have a tailwheel assembly in the, in the instructions. You can kind of see here, this is just like a bracket. That looks like it's a pretty common, I don't know if that's a Dubro or a Solomon, that may be just a Dubro um, tailwheel bracket, but they do give you that um, instructions here in the manual to add that, which I will do. There it is there. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to see what's in the box. Let's go ahead and pull out the hardware first. So this, of course, is the, the landing gear wire that they give you. It's really thick. It's really beefy. It looks like it's about, I don't know, it looks like it could be about 3 eighths of an inch thick or so. Uh, maybe not that much. Maybe 3 16 But yeah, very, a very strong um, hardened wire landing gear, which is, it's, I think it's fine. It serves its purpose. But like I said, I want to go with something that I like that looks a little bit better, which would be a solid, kind of a solid one. Let me put this off to the side here. All right, so I went and I grabbed a little parts box. I'm going to put some of my, some of the parts in here, um, just the hardware and stuff. So again, here is the landing gear hardware. And then here is the package of hardware that they give you. Let's go ahead and open this up. Take a look and see what they give you in here. So to start with, there's a bunch of threaded control rod in here. And that's for making all your different linkages, your, your setup for the ailerons and everything else, the stabilizer and elevator. I guess probably what they're gonna have you do is use a probably wood or dowel for the control rods that hook to these. Yeah, so I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this. I don't know if I'll use this type of setup or if I'll use like a Debro control rod, like the plastic control rod system, but we'll see. But yeah, so they give you a lot of these guys here. And I think some of these are for also the, they have a, a stabilizer on the elevator and the, um, on the rudder, they have stabilizing braces, wire braces. So that's probably what that's all for there. And then what else in here? So I see that they have a, they have a tail wheel wire, prevent tailwheel wire. So unlike the plans, which just show, which just show the a, a tail skid, they actually give you a prevent landing a wire for the tail. And oh, there, and then they also give you a little bracket. There's a little bracket, tailwheel bracket. That's cool. And then of course here they give you some a couple nylon screws for the wing. Wing, I'm sorry, bolts for the for the wing, hold the wing on. And then there's just a bunch of other little uh, control control horns in here and a bunch of clevises and a bunch of screws that go with that. So I won't take all that out. In fact, I'll put this stuff back, back in here for now, okay. And then there's another package of, looks like it's hardwood. This is probably for doing the, probably for doing the servo mounting and other type of things. Here's the dowels, the dowels for the wing. Okay, let me move this out of the way now. Oh, you know what, I'll put this other stuff in here. So here's just some, it's like some sheet balsa. Give you a variety of sheet balsa in here. And here's some more sheeting. 
material that there's some cut parts it's up here for now and then yeah let's go ahead and take a look at our laser cut ribs so here's a whole set of of the ribs nicely nicely laser cut nice and clean that's pretty nice and here's some more these these are probably some of the formers that go go on to that nose section that i was talking about the squared off nose section this right in here i think these are the formers for that and here's some thicker wood these looks like these are probably the stabilizer or the elevator i mean um, here's some long stock right here just balsa strips and then give you a bunch of that type of material very nice quality stuff very very solid very clean good condition this looks like it came out oh, this looks like it came off the fuselage side let's put that back in there again more quarter inch stock here's on these look like these are ailerons Here's the aileron set, boy, nice and thick. Um, here's some more sheeting. Here's the wing tips. These are the ones that go on the very, very end of the wings. These get sandwiched together, so you'll take two of them and sandwich them together to form each one. This is probably the rudder. Just some more different stock material in here. Here's some harder, some base wood material. Those are probably going to be they're probably going to be the main spars. Base wood material there. Here's some more base wood material. And some other small pieces. Let's see what this is here. There's some more sheeting. Some more sheeting. As I can see the fuselage in here. Here's a nice big piece of uh, this looks like it's quarter inch thick balsa there. Here are some formers for the turtle deck area. As you can see there, um, this must be the sheet that they want you to use if you wanted to use the optional kind of windscreen. That's, a, that's what this must be. It's kind of just clear. Oh, here's the old firewall. Nice beefy, looks like it's about a three eighths of an inch thick plywood. Somewhere around there. Wow, that's good. And what else? Some more, some more sort of random stock pieces. And then what do we got down here? So this is this is some this may be the more this is some plywood. This may be part of the wing bracing. I'm not sure. This may be the actual ring brace, the wing bracing right here for the center of the wing. Here are some formers or some bulkheads for the fuselage. Nice there. Some more all kinds of little pieces. Oh, this is for the landing gear block. If you're going to use the wire landing gear, then here are pieces of the fuselage. Here's like the front end, the nose, obviously. Let's go here. I'll have to put the stuff back in. And then here are the doublers for that. The Yeah, so these are the fuselage doublers here. Here's the firewall kind of doubler set. And here's the main sort of fuselage doubler set. And then here is the rear portion of the fuselage here. And this looks like it's the wing saddle. Probably just more, probably just more reinforcement for the, for the wing area. Again, here's a side piece for the fuselage. And here's the other kind of matching. This one came apart. More fuselage parts and some triangular stock and some other pieces and another nice thick piece. Yeah, so that's basically it. I don't know what these guys, I don't know if this is just scrap that's come off the, um, the frames for the wood pieces that have been cut. Here's another piece of uh, the base wood. So yeah, lots of, I'll say that's about it. It's, it's a lot of, a lot of really high quality wood nicely nice nice condition i didn't see anything in this quick inspection i didn't see anything that looked like it was damaged or warped but yeah looks looks really nice and boy it's nice nice kit
Okay, well there you have it folks. It's the Balsa USA Stingray 120. This was my pre-build review video. And yeah, I'm ready to go. So I have to get myself a few things. I have to get myself some wax paper to put down over my plans. And then I have to get myself some adhesives. I have to get some CA glues and some epoxy and some resin. And then I'm ready to go. Oh, and I have to clean up my, my messy work table over there to make room for this thing. Okay, so hopefully you'll join me in my Stingray build series. And like always, I appreciate you watching my channel and we'll see you next time.